Hi, today I'm presenting to you a beautiful piece by Ted Green that he calls Cycle of Fourths. It's a beautiful piece that uses shell voicings and only shell voicings, which is quite amazing really, uh, considering how beautiful it sounds, that we are only using three notes out of each chord. Now, before I show you uh, the piece being played, uh, I want you to, to understand what chords are being used. So let me show you. It is quite interesting. Uh, you can see that he is using the G major diatonic scale going backwards. So if you look, let's skip. Actually, I'll use this one even better. If you look at this and you skip uh, one chord every time, you can see that it's going from G going backwards to F sharp minor 7. That's could be a, a, a half diminished chord, going to E minor, going to D7, going to C major 7, going to B minor 7, going to A minor and going back to G. If you want to look at it going the other way, you can go from G to A minor, B minor, C major, D7, E minor, F sharp minor 7, flat 5 and ending up in G. So this is quite interesting. Huh? What he does try to do, and that's why he calls it cycle of fourths, he does try to go as much as possible from one chord to the fourth. Okay, that you can see that happening here. It's not happening here actually, but then it's happening again here, going from F sharp minus seven to B minus seven. It's happening here again, going to the next fourth. Okay, it's happening here again. It's happening here again. Okay, so whenever in 80% in of the cases, he is actually going uh, in fourths, okay? But the underlying uh, harmony is going from G backwards into the diatonic scale. And if you skip these uh, chords. And if you look at the picture that's on the screen, you will notice that there are one, two, three, four, five main shapes that are being used. And right at the end of the piece, there are three shapes that I only used once each. Huh? So just try to look at these shapes closely as the song is being played. Please ignore the little grey dots. Now, the only reason I included the grey dots on these diagrams, some people will find strange chords, these shell voicings, with only three notes, you know, the root, the seventh and the third, or the root, the third and the seventh. Some people might find them strange, but if you look at the grey dot, you may find them less strange. You might be able to relate them to chords that you already know. Just as an example, I can play if you look at this chord, actually, it doesn't really look like a C major 7, but if I play it like this, you might actually realize it is a C major 7, okay? Now, if I play this chord, you may not see it as an E major 7, but if I play it like this, th this is quite difficult, okay? It's an unusual form of an E major 7, okay? If I play this chord, you may not see it as an E minor 7, but it is actually, if, you, if I play it like this, and that's why I put the grey dot, so that you can actually try and recognize these chords. Huh? So they are unusual. And this chord, for example, you wouldn't see it as an A minor. If, if I just played these three fingers, you wouldn't see it as an A minor 7. However, if I play it differently, if I play this, you can see that it is in an A minor seven. So and so there's only, as I said, five main shapes that are used through the song, and then the song finishes with three uh, shapes. The other thing to notice is that uh, a lot of the time, for example, we start on the G major seven here, and the root note is on the fifth string, and when we go to the fourth it logically goes, the root goes to the fourth string, yeah, okay? So... And that happens... again here, yeah? Okay, so I'm going to play the piece and give uh, any extra explanations uh, later at the end of the playing. Yeah?
Okay, so let me just go through the chords very quickly. So we start on the G major 7, which is, as I said, it's... You might actually identify this uh, shape more easily. Okay, I showed you earlier. This is a C major 7, okay? And then we go F sharp minor 7 which could be a, a flat 5, but in here we're not playing any other intervals. B minor 7, as I said. Okay. E minor 7. A minor 7, as we said. And here, this is a... It changes here, actually. This is the shape is only used once. Huh? It's a D7 uh, shape. Okay. And we go to G major 7, huh? okay? And then C major 7, okay? F sharp minor 7, B minor 7, E minor 7. You're beginning to recognize these shapes up huh? as they repeat uh, quite a lot, E minor 7. Now A minor 7, this is, we go now to the roots. On the, so far we have seen roots on the 5th and 4th strings. Uh, now we're seeing roots on the 6th uh, string. Uh, A minor 7, root on the 5th string again, and then root on the 6th string. Okay, and that's it actually. So if you look at it logically, and if you remember the different shapes that are being used in the song, it should be uh, quite easy. And I think it's an absolutely beautiful song. Uh, because you're only playing three notes, three note chords, uh, you need sometimes to have added some reverb actually, or some delay on my guitar to give a fuller sound. If you're playing an electric guitar, it can really work. You can try to experiment with different effects. But I think it's a beautiful piece, actually, and it's also quite educational in that it's showing you different okay. forms of these shell voicings, um, which I think are absolutely beautiful in spite of their uh, mi minimalist uh, nature. Okay, so good luck.